Welcome back to the show, everyone. I have Brad and Nicole Bean. Nicole and Brad, I really don't know what the right order is whenever I have two guests. Alphabetical. Welcome to the show. Alphabetical. Let's do that. <laughs> we were just talking about traveling and how it's so important. And really, we got into some pretty deep stuff in part one, not just about traveling because it's such a broad topic. It could be so surface level, but really talking about having the permission to travel if you are working or running a business and then really prioritizing it because life is too damn short and traveling, I mean, you want to do it when you can, right? And you just never know. As Brad said, tomorrow is never promised. And so we have them back on the show today for part two, because now that you have this beautiful idea of traveling, you want to be able to do it. And they're going to talk to you about the means to do it. Let's get into it. I recently saw that you all flew from Cairo to Montreal in business class. And if you don't know about business class, ooh, let me tell you, pinkies up. You're not flying like sitting down on a regular chair. Brad and Nicole like to fly in style, laying back on a bed, sleeping, being comfortable, getting some, some nice oh, yeah. service. And unlimited champagne. And unlimited champagne, getting a little tipsy. 30,000 feet above the ground. How do y'all do that? I mean, I, I, I knew Pizarro's was kicking butt, but to drop $2,200 on a flight per person, I mean, come on, tell us your secrets. So a lot of the travel uh, that we do, um, we utilize credit cards to do it. And we have accumulated quite a bit of point doing so. And so the business class flights that we have flown in our, our most recent travels have been done through the point system. So that's how we have afforded these fancy schmancy flights. It's not something that we're just like throwing out bukus of money for, um, but you can if you want. We like to save a little money. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. So, but you're not using credit cards to like charge up $4,400 in flights and and like pay that off one day, right? That's not what you mean. No, no. So a lot of our credit cards, and we have a couple different ones, and I'm still trying to get my hands on one uh, in particular, which we'll talk about later. But um, it's it's just one of those things like you kind of utilize these um, in ways to accumulate points. It's a, it's all based on a point system. I know there's cashback options as well, but it's more beneficiary to utilize the point system in order to redeem for gift cards, travel, renting cars all kinds of stuff, special events. You can redeem them for like concert tickets or meet and greets, things like that. I mean, there's tons of things you can do with all these points. How did you all hear about this? Cause like, I, I'm starting to sound, it's starting to sound like it's, it's a great thing, right? Like people normally they see, oh, you get 2% cash back. Uh, you get 3% cash back, but instead of getting like cash back, you get experiences. Like that's pretty dope. Heck yeah. Uh, so I think this all started when I got a, a letter in the mail from American Express and it was the most beautiful platinum gray package and it was like a small envelope and it felt like suede to me. It was like something beautiful had just arrived to me and I opened it up and it was an application for an American Express platinum card and everyone knows that American Express is kind of like a very coveted card but the downfall is you need to pay off your card basically every month in order to maintain a high credit score, which American Express obviously is the best credit card you can have for your credit score. So after hours of contemplation and hours of conversation on the phone with the American Express concierge, I kind of figured out this was going to be the best card for me because I could reap the most benefits towards travel, which is like my life's goal is to travel. So it was something that kind of worked with me and not against me. And I was able to kind of figure out this point system could happen fairly quickly. And over the last four or five years, American Express has been the card. I mean, it's there's there's cool perks on all the cards, but American Express is definitely the one that we take with us everywhere. Yeah. So do you both then apply for the same card to get more points or do you just like use one card and accumulate all the points everywhere and it sits in one balance? So here's the downfall is that when I was younger, because I got I've had my platinum card for 
I think, 10 years now. Um, when I first applied for it, um, there was a perk of adding another card member on. And Brad was adamant he did not want the platinum card as well because there is an annual fee. Um, and so he decided he wanted to get the gold card, which was a mate to my platinum. So that's kind of what we went with. Um, now, looking back on it, I really wish that he would have applied for his own card because there are sign up bonuses when you apply for cards. And oftentimes those sign up bonuses are thousands of points, thousands of points that could land you free flights across seas. But danger, right? Danger listeners, you need to understand that. OK, give us the warning. Here we go. Give us the warning. So if if we both add, if we both have our own cards, then maybe she's looking at hers. We're looking at or I'm, I'm looking at mine and, you know, we can rack up really quickly. Right. So we have to be careful as we're talking about these credit cards. You don't want to, you know, overextend yourself beyond, you know, what you can take care of in a month's time, because that's American Express's uh, deal. You know, you got to pay it back in a month's time or it's a super high interest. So. I think that was originally, you know, because Pizarro's wasn't kicking 10 years ago. It was, I mean, it was kicking, but not like kicking, kicking. Um, we, were, we were baby. We were babies. Yeah. So we, that was the mentality behind it, right? Uh, you want to be careful. You want to be a gold card. Gold card's awesome. Um, I think it's three or four points for any restaurant that we go to. So we go to the restaurant, we use the gold card, go to travel or uh, Nicole can speak to what the perks of the platinum card is, but you know, they, each card has its perks and working in tandem. It's a good thing. Yes, definitely. You want something that covers all of your different spending categories so you can maximize the points that you get. Because if you spend money at Amazon, you get X number of points depending on the card. But if you go to a grocery store, you might get three points depending on the card. So optimizing which card for the spending category makes sense. But let me ask you as business owners, do you all have a business credit card? We have business credit cards for all of, basically all of our businesses. Um, so with Pizarro's, we have opted for the cash back um, versus like Brad Knight's personal businesses. We focus more towards the travel points because that's where we, that's where we want to be. Um, Cesaro's is our family business, so we don't get to run that one as, as much as we would like to, um, because it's a family option. So, you know, the family has decided in whole, we would take the cashback option, which is actually quite nice because at the end of the year, we do get to divvy up some, some pretty nice cash flow. I like that. Yeah. And I think one of the mistakes here for people is when they think about credit, they get scared because of what Brad was alluding to earlier. If you don't pay the credit card in a month's time, you're in trouble. You're going to get hit with these high interest fees and you are better off paying with cash. But I think who we're talking to in this episode are the financially sound people, the people who were get, who have the cash to pay for their goods. And if you have that cash sitting in your bank account, you might as well pay with a credit card so that you can get some cash back, or you can have the option to travel. Ding, ding, right? ding. Definitely. I wanted to bring you two on because I'm a huge fan of travel credit cards. And I might be a little bit overboard on these uh, because my wife and I sign up for a new card every time we finish a minimum spend. So we rack up maybe close to, I don't know, 500,000 points a year just because we're constantly signing up for these, but that pays for all of our travel. And I think what people, what I want people to understand is that if you get these cards, it's no longer a question of how do I travel? It, you have the answer right there. It's like you have that extra like reserve fund to be able to travel. And I guess like, do you, you said you were talking about like your business trip, uh, your business flights from Cairo. Where else have you been able to travel due to credit card rewards? Uh, so we flew from Houston to Naples in first class. 
Um, and then we also flew from Houston to Buenos Aires on business class um, earlier, way earlier this year. Um, so it, we've kind of been able to utilize a lot of these points this year. And I'm really impressed that you racked up like 500,000 points. That is very impressive. I drive. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, if, <laughs> if you th- just think about like, you know, do I spend every, like the banks don't like me. Let's put it this way. I like, you know, I just look at their rules <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, how do I like get close to breaking them, but not actually break them? I can't even apply for a new American express card. Right. Um, that's because they, you know, they've told me like, you can't apply for any more, bro. Um, <laughs> but you just got to find the other credit cards, uh, that will allow you. Um, what's your favorite credit card? It's impressive to, Ooh, Brad, calm down. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I am big on Chase and American Express. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I de- yeah. I definitely love Chase because they are a little bit more friendly to me uh, for now. Um, but yeah. Okay. So if you're listening to this episode with Brad and Nicole Bean and you're thinking to yourself, I drift, I am so ready to travel. Bam. I got you. There is a link to a business credit card from Chase, it will get you $900 cash back after you meet a minimum spend within a certain amount of time. If all of that gibberish doesn't make sense to you, I am offering also free consultation. I have been doing travel hacking and collecting credit card points and miles for many, 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 many years. I've collected millions and millions and millions of points, not exaggerating here, and I want to help you travel. One, because it's very near and dear to my heart. Two, I know that if you are in the pizza game, you got expenses. You're either buying a new uni oven, you are either investing in a dough press or something that allows you to pay with a credit card. So why not maximize those credit card rewards, especially if you have the cash already? Use a credit card, use a travel credit card to help get you some travel rewards. And the link that I have is gonna get you $900 worth of free travel or even more. Again, if you don't know how to use the points, they're pretty self-explanatory, but let me help you. Trust me, I got you. I can turn that $900 worth of points into so much more if you want all the strategies and the goodies. But if you just wanna get something simple, the Chase Inc cash credit card is amazing. It's the one that I recommend to almost everyone. And if you want to start your travel points game, that's the one you're going to want to go with. So link to that will be in the show notes. It is an affiliate link and I appreciate you for signing up. But hey, if you have any questions or hesitations at all, let me know. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you get out there and travel and eat some amazing pizza or just take a break, a much needed break because everyone in pizza works so damn hard. I appreciate you. I love you. Now back to the show. I I think it's impressive because uh, you all flew first class from Houston to Naples. I didn't know that. I didn't see that on your Instagram. How was that experience? Uh, That was a lot of fun. This was the first time that Brad and I had flown first class together. We've flown first separately um, in different occasions, but this was the first time that we actually got to do it together, which was a lot of fun. But I panicked about this because I took in a thousand dollar gift card from uh, someone had paid me in with a gift card and I had no idea what to do with this gift card. And so I had this conversation with Brad for like two weeks. I was like, I don't know what to do with this. What should we spend this on? We went back and forth of what we should utilize this gift card for because I'm not the type of person who likes to spend it here, spend it there, whatever. Then by the end of the t- the, the card, you're like, you've got five dollars, but you can't do anything with it Um, because most systems want you to pay the full amount they won't break it down into anything smaller so um, he came up with the idea let's use it for groceries I was like how can I use this for travel well at the time Marriott Bonvoy was doing a promotion of 40% points so whatever amount of points that you bought you got 40% more so let's say you bought a thousand points you would end up getting 1400 points instead So I ended up utilizing the $1,000 gift card to buy points. However, Uh yeah, however, uh, the transfer process is a little bit funky. Um, 
the great thing is like Marriott has transfer partners, which is amazing. However, it takes about a week for the point to transfer over to wherever it's going. So I'm like staring at these tickets that I just bought for economy. And I'm like, this is a 10 hour flight. We're going to be stuck in economy for 10 hours. And I didn't want that to happen. Obviously, it's a very long flight. So I was waiting very patiently for these points to get over so that I could put them in and <laughs> purchase the upgrade. Oh, now patiently you were waiting. <laughs> it was very stressful. I was impatient. <laughs> it was very stressful. Um, but mm. yes, so there's a lot of transfer things that you can do with them between different um, different partners, which is a very cool and additional process. But the transfers don't always end up to be super beneficiary. So that's another caveat of if you have points, read through all the fine print. I know, Idra, you probably will. Um, but read through all the fine print and realize how much the transfer points are going over to and how much you're getting back from the transfer. For sure. I've been there. What What do you all uh, recommend as a way to learn more about this process? Because it, I, I will... 100% agree. It takes a lot of reading. It's very, it can be time consuming, but definitely rewarding at the end of the day. Uh, maybe like Brad, you're, were, you're were listing off a couple of your favorite resources. Tell me more about that. So I'll tell you a lot of YouTube, right? Um, we have a YouTube channel, Brad Nicole Bean. So our travel channel, that's my plug, but long story short, we've followed for, um, another couple many, many years now, um, that really got us excited about international travel. And they recently started a website to where you can go and look, you know, they just kind of push this stuff out to you. It's called the daily drop. And so that's a huge resource that we've just come across. And it's, as it says, a daily drop of, of information. Nicole's really the, the person in this realm. Um, I get emails constantly of things I haven't signed up for, but it actually is a really good resource, you know, uh, Hawaiian air or Egypt air or, the, one of the other 50 things that she signed me up for. <laughs> yeah. My wife gets those emails too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're the culprit in your family, huh? I'm the culprit. I, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm in charge of managing the points and my wife is in charge of saying, yes, I'm Chelsea. And I authorize my husband to <laughs> handle my account stuff. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, no, I, I love what you said. YouTube blogs, uh, websites, the information is out there. And I think what I want to encourage people in this show is listen to what Nicole just said. She had an economy ticket to Naples. And yes, she is blessed and Brad is blessed to be able to even go to Naples. But like if you can spend 10 hours in economy versus 10 hours in first class, like why wouldn't you? Right. And, uh, I think it's just a matter of knowledge. Like, oh, I can do this? How? Right. And like these credit card points are so available. They're so abundant. And I think people just need to make the switch and think, hey, rather than paying cash, pay with a credit card. And rather than getting a cash back card, maybe I can do a travel credit card instead. Absolutely. Absolutely. You need to weigh out your options when you're choosing credit cards because- a lot, like I said, a lot of them have bonus signups. Um, and then if you kind of look into the benefits of it, um, it'll list out what the benefits are. Um, so a lot of the times, American Express, for example, has uh, five times rewards when you book travel, whether it's through their website or directly through like, let's say Delta or Marriott, um, Hilton, so on. You get five times the awards back, rewards back. So that means five times the amount that you just spent on whatever hotel. Let's say you spent $300. You just got five times plus the $300 versus if you went the cash route, you likely going to get between one and 3% back. So if you spent $300, you're really only going to get like maybe $8 back. So you really have to weigh the benefits of what you specifically want out of that card. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes it makes, sometimes people are just like, ah, I'm just going to use the cashback card because it's already there in my pocket. Right. But if you use the travel credit card, you may get more back. And I think that's also the, the switch that I want to see light up in people. It's like, oh, right. Like I could be using cashback. And like you said earlier, you get a nice payout at the end of the year. That is nice too. 
But these but these first class flights too, they could be more than the payout. It just depends on what you value. And for the person thinking, oh, I don't have the money to travel, again, this could be your fund to do so. Absolutely. But you also have to be a little bit wary. Um, so with one of our businesses, we have a Bank of America travel credit card. And mm-hmm. I hate it. Mm, why? Because it's very limited. You can only utilize your rewards towards travel redemption. So you can't utilize that those benefits anywhere else other than by redeeming the monetary funds. So I would have to, let's say, buy a ticket to come see you in, in California. And the only way that I can redeem that cash or the funds to me is by purchasing it for full price and then taking the going in, taking the rewards and then applying it to it which is terrible. Got it. I hate this it card. Is. I want to get rid of it so bad. <laughs> then get rid of it. <laughs> I'm, going to, <laughs> I'm trying to apply for a Capital One Venture X card. That is my like ultimate card that I really, really want. I love that. But yes. I can't get it yet. Why is it that you can't get it yet? It is very important. It's probably why you can't get an American Express card either is because there's a rule called 524. If you open five cards in 24 months, you are not allowed to apply for another card. And uh, Capital One is very, very strict on this. Um, Chase is another one who kind of monitors that a little more loosely. Um, But all right, now I have to wait till one of my cards goes through a full 24 months before I can actually apply for the Venture X card. So I think I'm a couple months out from being able to, but I'm like, hurry, please. (laughs) Picture this. A new family moves into your neighborhood. What does that mean for you? a potential new customer. What better way to introduce yourself than with free pizza? Here's how. Our Town America works with businesses like yours to craft irresistible welcome packages to anyone who moves into your neighborhood. If you listen to my podcast with Christina Martin of Manitza's Pizza, she uses this same tactic and oh my goodness, she is raking in the customers who naturally become diehard fans of her business. So if this is something you want to get started on, you got to get with Susan from Our Town America. Let her know you heard about her from What's Good Dough. That way, you can save $125 if you get set up. I got you, fam. You can reach her at 480-678-1366. Again, that's Susan from Our Town America. 480-678-1366. Thanks for supporting our sponsors. Brad, thank you, thank you, thank you for that layup because that was perfect. We needed that. And I think... One thing that I want to leave people with today, especially if you run a business, is that the no, the rule that Nicole is talking about, the 524 rule, they're essentially monitoring how many credit cards you're applying for in a year. That's why some banks don't like me, American Express in particular. Um, but the way to get around that is if you apply for a business card. If you apply for a business card, some business cards don't go on your credit report or your personal credit report which the banks are looking at, meaning you can apply for a business card and it won't count towards that 524 rule. And that's why I have a lot of business cards. <laughs> it's smart. You got to outsmart the you, bank. You, you, you kind of do. And like, I mean, at the end of the day, like I just want to travel. And I think people listening to the show are on a similar level where it's like, oh, I can qualify for a business card. Why can't I apply for one, right? Or maybe I have a business card that has no rewards. Maybe I should change it up. On that note, because you two are like operators, what can be spent in your business via a credit card? Because like you can't you can't pay payroll on a credit card, right? You can. You can pay payroll. Oh, you can. You can. <laughs> oh, it depends. And, and, yeah. and earn rewards? Oh, tell me more, please. Oh, my goodness. My my mind's blown right now. <laughs> okay, so remember I was telling you about how Pizarro's has a cashback reward credit card. Uh, we actually pay our payroll on a credit card because we reap so much benefit from it. I mean, thousands of dollars benefits. Um, so that's kind of why we all agreed as a family, like this would be the best choice because we get thousands of dollars back that we get to split up amongst the family at the end of the year. 
we're doing something that we do every single day. Pay our employees. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. That's huge. It's a what bonus. Is the, what is the payroll company that allows this? Um, I believe it. Uh, QuickBooks. How do we do it? ADP, QuickBooks. All, all those. They're all interlaced together through Intuit. Uh-huh. And there's no processing fee for using a credit card? There is a, I think it's a two or 3% processing fee, but if you think but about you it, cash you get cash back. So it, it kind of balances itself out um, in a very mm. beneficial way. So you're really paying okay. like minimal fees to do it. Um, uh-huh. But just remember your payroll is often off by a couple days or a week. So it could throw your balances off a little bit, which we run into here or there. Um, as far as like paying your credit card and things like that, but there is a huge benefit for us. And that's why we decided to do it. A, a lot of your providers, they're fine with running credit cards. Uh, some of the bigger names like Cisco, they, they're not a big fan of it, but like Joe Lasante, he'll take a credit card. Bro, with some of your local produce guys, they'll definitely take credit cards um, with a processing fee, of course. But if you weigh those, you know, those, that balance out. If that's what you want to do is get that cash back or those points, absolutely worth it. It's a game of arbitrage. If your processing fee is 1%, 2%, but if your cash back rate is 3%, 4%, 5%, you're up. I personally pay my taxes with my credit card, uh, my, my property taxes at the end of the year. Why? It's, why do I pay the extra 2.2%? Because th the rewards I get back are somewhere in the range of 5 to 10%. So I'm netting an additional 3% up to 7%. So that is the game, people. It's like, how, how much juice can I squeeze out of these, out of my daily spend, out of the money that I'm putting out there? Um, and as a business operator, you're putting a lot of money out there because you got to put out money to make money. Is that not right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's all money that you're already going to spend. It's just a matter of in which way you do it and which benefit you're going to take. Yes, 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 yes. Are there any, let's say I'm skeptical about paying the processing fees, which I understand. Are there any quick examples that you could think of where there's no processing fees? I know, Brad, you were listing a couple. Did uh, Are any of those non-processing fee related? Restaurant Depot. I think we all have restaurant depots where we are. I, I want to say if they do have a, a process fee, it's very, very small, 1% or less. Um, mine doesn't. Okay, there you go. Mine, do um, mine, mine doesn't if you go in the store. I don't know if yours delivers to you. It, so ours delivers, but no. Delivers. I mean, They we, do we, deliver. We, right, but we have the broad liners that we do most of our business through, and I spend maybe just you know four or $5,000 a month. Well, that's not true. A week there at restaurant mm -hmm. depot getting odds and ends mm -hmm. so some good money between two stores between yeah between two, two stores, stores of course sure yeah, yeah. That out there. that's just for the house that's what we that's what we use at our house yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of toilet paper we're a family of two Damn. <laughs> oh my goodness what, what what are you guys eating over there y'all are cooking a lot i don't blame you no, just like, <laughs> um okay one thing that I wanted to leave people with is insurance. If you pay for your like workers comp insurance or general liability, those tend to be high ticket items that you could pay off with a credit card. And there's sometimes no processing fee. So look for that. Um, you can re you can get a bunch of rewards from that. As we wrap up here, is there anything else that we may not have covered. I know we, we kind of jumped around here and, and we're, you know, hopefully this, this has been helpful for folks, Brad, I want to, or Nicole, I want to ask you like the one mistake question and, and maybe we can talk about it one more time, but like, what is one mistake people can avoid when getting into this, this crazy world of credit card rewards? Brad, I'll let you answer. And then, um, I'll answer something as well. Don't overextend yourself. Um, I know we're talking to a group of people that maybe that's not a, you know, that's not a thing. And, um, you know, it, even if it, let's say you do the American express and, you know, you go to Europe at first class, it's like 12 grand, you pay for that hotel and maybe you can't pay it off that next month. That's a penalty. 
have have a plan in place for what you want to do and then uh, execute that plan. Uh, we've been there. We've made that mistake. Same. Same. We're all young, right? We all make mistakes with credit cards. <laughs> as long as we learn them and it doesn't break us. Right. That's true. Yeah. yeah. What else, Nicole? What do you got? I have a two-parter. Uh, one, always read your fine print so you know what you're getting into and what benefits you can reap from it. But two, when you're done using that card or you no longer want that card, make sure that you remove it from any uh, like pre uh, pre-charge option. So let's say you have it on like auto, auto pay or your insurance or your uh, electrical bills, so on and so forth. Make sure that you remove those and then cut that mf -er up so you don't have <laughs> access to it at all. Uh, <laughs> but get it get it off of everything. Uh, when you're done with the card, get it off of everything. Get rid of it. Um, it will eventually fall off of your credit. But you'd want to make sure that if you're done with it, you are absolutely done with it. There's no hidden secrets because in your mind, you're done with it. But auto pay doesn't forget. <laughs> no, yes, you really have to be organized with these things because the last thing you want is like your insurance bill to be up and then they're like, oh yeah, we'll just charge that credit card that you no longer have. And then all of a sudden you're past due on your insurance bill and something bad happens. So there are spreadsheets out there. There are rules out there. Use them, read them, all of that. Um, this is so helpful. Before I let you two go though, you have to tell me how was first class going to Naples? Because uh, I don't even think you all described that, right? You described was, business. Was it any different? It was it was Delta One. Um, so it's there. It was Delta One, right? Nicole, you looked at me weird. It was Delta One. Yeah. Okay. Good. No, it's Delta One. Um, still a lay down <laughs> seat, like a little pod. They were facing in at each other. Luxury. I would I would say, you know, all the drinks that you want, your food comes out hot. I mean, comes out hot throughout the plane. Um, the bathrooms, actually the can, uh, Canada Air bathrooms were like oh, crazy. So good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even the bathrooms are fancy in these airplanes, y'all. Y'all have to get in it. And then how was Naples? What brought you all there? Was it for the, the competition? Yes. Yeah, we went to compete mm. for the competition. And uh, yeah, definitely it's better to arrive relaxed and uh, refreshed and get moving because we flew, um, we actually flew to Rome and then trained down to Naples. So we knew that was going to be a little bit hectic, but it was a slightly cheaper flight. So we decided to do a cheaper flight and use our monies and points wisely. My first international first class flight, I walked off the plane and then I looked at my wife and I said, this was our honeymoon. I looked at my wife and I said, now I know why rich people pay for this shit. Is it? <laughs> I was like, for real. I was just like, oh my God. I know why it's like a hundred times more than the economy seat. It's because you feel a thousand times better. Absolutely. The eight hour it's flight crazy. feels like a two hour flight. The 15 hour flight feels like a six hour flight. It's just like a, a world of difference. And they keep beating you like. The whole way through, yeah. I, I couldn't even eat like the last meal that we got on our uh, flight to <laughs> Montreal was just like, I'm going to throw up if I eat anything more. Like they just keep pushing food in your face. Let's step away from the luxury real quick, because that could be like, oh, I don't care about that. Right. For someone. But let's put it in practical terms. You all went to uh, Naples for business. Mm -hmm. it right. You all went there with a goal in mind. That is, I'm going to go network, compete, represent. And if you're tired and you're not Brad and Nicole, Nicole and Brad, and you're, you know, kind of drowsy, you're not yourself. Oh, that's going to take a toll. Absolutely. And so if you can use this currency to get you there a little bit more efficiently, why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm the type of person who likes to land and hit the, hit the ground running. Uh, so for me, I, I need to like, be refreshed, be on it, be ready, because I have done trips where I've gotten off the plane and been tired, tried to do a 12 mile hike and couldn't make it past the second mile. Sucks. Jet lag is a real thing. It is totally. a real thing. And it's not fun. 
Any final words uh, as we wrap up this episode? Thank you so, so much for sharing your journey. Um, yeah, the floor is yours. How do you all want to say, how do you all want to land this? How do you all want to land the plane? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect landing. Uh, I would like to extend the offer. If you have questions, reach out, please. There's so much to learn, not just from me, but from anybody that you admire, that you see them doing something that you want to do reach out, chat with them. And that goes beyond just travel or redemption, credit cards, reward points, so on. Just if there's something that you see that you want or you'd like to be a part of, stop and ask questions. Don't be afraid, guys. Get out there. I, I know for me, I suffer from some anxiety, especially when we're traveling. And if if that's you, you know, have a partner, um, trust in that partner and, you know, get out there and, and see the world. <sighs> What a great message, both of you, um, because what we just talked about in this last two episodes is kind of difficult. And yes, getting help. I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. But the last thing, too, is just like I want to say is you two, Brad and Nicole, are such great role models and inspirations to like others who may, I guess, be closed in. They're like, oh, I don't know how I can travel or I don't know how to start another business, or I'm just kind of stuck. Like when they see you and your profiles and all the things that you're doing, I could do that too, because they're doing it. And so I would just want to say, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for being the inspiration that we all need. Thank you for opening up and being vulnerable in these last two episodes. And thank you for showing people the way. I appreciate you two for being on. Thank you so, so much. Thanks for having, Thanks us, for having us. Good talking with you. Thank you for listening to the What's Good Dope podcast. Make sure to check out the show notes where you'll find links to my Patreon, email list, and the links to all my sponsors. You'll also find the contact info for today's guest too. Before we sign off today, I'd love it if you could support me by rating and reviewing this show. It helps so much when it comes to growing the show. Also, please share this episode with a friend, family member, or fellow pizza maker, especially if you think it'll add value to their lives. You can copy the link to this podcast and send it on over to them, or you can even share it via social media. If you do that, please tag me. I'd greatly appreciate it. Last but not least, I'd love it if you subscribe to the show. That way you can get notified anytime there's a new podcast. I appreciate you for listening. I love you. Till next time. Peace. Hey, home pizza makers. What's good, dough? It's time for you and me to partner up together and make pizzas for good. How do we do that? You and I will be doing pizza parties nationwide to raise money for Slice Out Hunger. And yes, it is starting now. So if you want to be a part of my team and make pizzas for good, you can register to be a part of Team What's Good Dough. And yes, it is welcome to all bakers, whether you're just starting off or you're a seasoned pop-up pro. Let's make pizza for good together. What's happening? What's good, Dough? It's your boy, Idrif. And if you're thinking, whoa, that just brought me back to a place long, long time ago, where Idrif used to do one long podcast. None of this, oh, he'll break it down into three parts to make it more digestible, blah, blah, blah. If you're part of that old crew and you are missing the old style podcast, don't you worry. I've been listening to your feedback and I got you, fam. Here's the thing. I am making the shorter podcasts for people who are just jumping onto the What's Good Dough train today in 2023. But if you miss the old podcasts and you want to listen to them from beginning to end in just one go, heck, if you want to listen to the podcasts with no ads, I have two solutions for you. The free solution is that you can sign up for my email list. If you sign up for the email list, there is a link in the show notes and I will invite you to my private podcast feed. There you will get one episode every time there's a new podcast episode from beginning to end, no ads, all in one take. No more waiting for this part one, part two, part three stuff. I got you. The second way is if you sign up for Patreon. There you will get exclusive content plus the podcast from beginning to end, no ads. So free, sign up for the email list or not free, supporting your boy. You can go ahead and get exclusive content and ad-free listening all in one go. All that is going to be linked in the show notes. I appreciate you. I love you. Till next time. Peace.